All right, let's switch topics to substance use disorders. Now, this we know is <laughs> we are very just, familiar. We are all <laughs> so familiar, and but and it's also it's taken on kind of a new degree of urgency, despite our you know the years and years of people that come into the emergency department with certain kinds of drugs on board that use them for recreational purposes or whatever. It is now a true public health crisis. Um, thank you, Sackler family, and all of the people that ended up addic addicted to opioids. Substance use disorders is a gigantic public health crisis. And it's not just opioids, it's across the board. Um, and it, we, I mean, we see it all the, all time. the time, all the time. In fact, we'd have nothing to do if there weren't alcohol and drugs <laughs> out there. We really have nothing to do. Yeah. Um, it is a really big healthcare, price, healthcare crisis. We see the intoxicated. We see people who overdose. We see people who got reversed in the field and get brought into us. And, and they're often hard to deal with, right? Very Especially hard. they've had a high. Now they're not high anymore. They're agitated. They're irritable. They're aggressive. I, I, we all know or have been somebody assaulted in this kind of situation where we've been assaulted in the emergency department. We, we know it's like a just fraught. It's just full of trouble. Um, it does make, it, it, it challenges you as a human to keep things kind of cool, to not let it escalate with you getting it just as involved and angry <laughs> as they are. So empathy and kindness is important if you can. And so you, yeah. you really need to dig down deep and take a step back, take a breath, realize you're not the one with the substance use disorder. They are. And our job is to do the best we can for them and to keep our environments safe. So we also do know, and there's great data now that says if we do the right thing and if interventions happen, especially in some of the specific substances themselves that we'll, we'll get into, we can change lives. We can save lives. We can break addiction cycles. We can get people who are stealing and living on the streets to, because they get, their life has just devolved to that back to employment and back to uh, productive lives. And it is not infrequent that it is our intervention, our taking the time that day that can make the difference. So it is worth the effort. It's worth sort of investing the time. I think it's hard. Uh, the empathy and kindness is particularly challenging and to be non-judgmental about it. You know, it, it's, you know, like you said, they're the one with, with the problem. Um, and to not be super judgy because mm -hmm. it's easy to get judgy. It's part of the, you know, it's part of the lack of empathy, um, but to, to try to remember not to be judgmental. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it is a, it's, it's a disease, it's a disorder, it's, it's, it's in the social and behavioral part, but it's also, you it's know, a, it's, it's a, a real thing. It's an actual <laughs> disease. It's yeah. a biochemical problem with them. So it it's is. Not and actually some of the, so if you, if you ever find yourself really frustrated with this, there's some really interesting, um, science out there that talks yep. about the genetic predilection yep. to substance use disorders, particularly opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is, if you happen to be one of those people that, that you have the gene and you get the drug, it, you're a setup. You, it, you don't want to be there. It, no. I, I don't know. T I don't think there are too many people that are really ab ab abusing substances who are happy, you know, who are really love yes. what's happening there. Their lives so are miserable. They are miserable. Yeah. So, so this is. A, it is a time to to just step back. And, and I think it's so hard not to be judgmental. It's like you know, you did this to yourself. You're the one that takes the drugs. Yes. You did this, except you can make a difference. So, and, and, I think we all, and if you're having a bad day, you're yeah. not feeling super empathetic, yeah. fine, then do the right thing medically. But if you're having a great day, <laughs> then maybe take that extra step. It's easy to sit here and have it slides is. and discussions. I just worked a shift yesterday and I'm just reflecting back on a patient I had and I was super judgy. I mean, it happens. Like, it oh, just, everybody you know, does. So and Jan is one of the <laughs> nicest people in the world. So, you know, if she gets judgy, all, you know, everybody gets judgy. Just so you know. It's yeah, okay. it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it is fine. You're not, you're human. Everyone yeah. is human. But, it, but I'll tell you, when you're having a good day and you do take the extra time yes. and it works, yeah. It is we a were. high. It is so, so, so well, it's, it's fun. It's, <laughs> it's a high. It's a, yeah. it's a non substance use high. Yeah. Um, we, we can't screen for this. I mean, it, by the, it's super prevalent for one thing, and there's just no really good screening tool to see. And plus, I mean, we screen for enough stuff already. <laughs> it's like, uh, don't give me another screening tool I have to do. But they're not very specific, so they're not very helpful. But targeted people, where they're, it's like, oh, you know, you're an overdose, of, or you're suicidal, or yeah. you're acting a little funny, or you're, being human, you know, human trafficked, or there, if there's a something where it's like, oh, there's yeah. there's some reason here, I really need to address this with you, then do. And if there's substance use disorder that's even on your thought process, make sure you address suicidality. Um, substance use over, you know, substance abuse, these use or I guess substance use disorder to SUD, which is the sort of most appropriate term here. They, suicidality is something that crosses people's minds a lot when they're stuck in this cycle. So that is definitely something that you need to, to address. And in fact, by, by rec 
rec regulations, some of us actually have to do that by law. If there's certain cases of overdoses and things, we have to address suicidality. Um, if the suicidality is confirmed or you know it's suspected, then you need to sort of see if you need to do anything further, like put someone on a hold or or do a little contracting thing, which we'll talk about suicidality separately, but just know that it, it adds a little level of things that you need to address. One of the things that we do when it comes to substance use disorder, one of the things, and this concept of capacity versus competence, which we do have to determine in helping, you know, knowing if somebody can leave or not, knowing what kinds of tests we can do or not, um, this idea of someone's decision-making capacity, that is something that com will come up now and in a couple other parts of the, the remainder of this module. It is something that you need to know what you, what you do and what you don't do as far as doing this as an emergency physician. So capacity which is the ability to make an informed decision. I can listen to information, process it, and make an informed decision. We determine that. Okay, you can't just pass that off to it's some legal concept out there. We actually determine the capacity to make a decision. Competence, which is a whole different and actually more nuanced and complicated thing, is a legal decision. So, and and it's, it sounds like semantics, but it really isn't because it brings in the legal issues here. So in your documentation, the word competence should probably get removed entirely. Yeah and replaced with the word capacity. Um, it is a place where if things do go bad and things go to court, attorneys love the fact that you made that mistake and will jump on the, are you, can you determine competence, you know, doctor? The reality is just stick capacity in there. And then when you think about that, you know, to determine capacity, it's not that hard. We do it all the time. We do it all the time, right? We just now have to document it clearly in a case where there's a, where, where it may go beyond, like someone wants to leave AMA. We want to know the stakes here. It, do they understand the, the relevant, do they understand the decisions that they're making? Do they appreciate the consequences of the decisions that they're making? Can they weigh the options? Can they, and can they express this choice? And often the way to get at that is, is sort of the repeat back. Yes. So you talk to the patient, you say, you know, you're having chest pain, um, your EKG shows that you're having an, an acute heart attack, you're having what we call a STEMI, you're having an acute heart attack. The odds are if you leave that you may have an event that could lead to your death or permanent disability. If you stay, we can intervene and do the best that we can on a medical basis. Can you please tell me what we just talked about? And if they can repeat back all of that, I understand that I am deciding to leave because, and I may die, that you could maybe help me if I stay here and it is my choice to leave, you're good. You know, that's the AMA part of it, but this also goes to people who might be intoxicated. I'll tell you, demented patients, demented patients may have full capacity. It gets to a point where you cross your capacity, your ability to make these, these kind of nuanced decisions, but often people with mild dementia are fully capable yeah. of determining their, and people with psychiatric disorders can be fully capable. This four-part thing, this little, I love this little four-part box thing here, that just drop that into your dot phrases so you have to address that and you now can completely, very comfortably ad address somebody's capacity to make a decision. So they have to have all four and now they have capacity to make a decision. So when it comes to substance use disorder, this may be partly impaired, but maybe not. Yeah, and people can make a bad decision. They are allowed. They're allowed to make a bad decision, but as long as they are processing it in the right way. Right, exactly. So, so just this concept of substance use disorders and capacity, we're going to toss this out now. We will kind of get more, we'll delve more in deep into the specifics of substances in a little while.